Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part four of What If Naruto Became the New God of Apocalypse. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episodes over the other channels. Yes, I indeed have four channels which I post what if on every single day. Yes, you heard that correctly every single day for you guys to enjoy. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, and Anime Prince, which I post what if on every day, guys. And also, don't forget to turn on the bell notification and see exactly when I post. So without further ado or wasting any more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Without wasting any more time, guys, begin now. So the last part that we left off, Supergirl was currently talking to Cat Grant as this was her debut as she was talking and introducing herself. As Cat asked her about Superman and all that and about their connection and also she asked her if there was anyone special in her life. Supergirl did not release exact information on his name or anything, however she kind of accidentally said more than she needed to. And that led many people to create a list, as Cat Grant also created a list as well, of the potential suitors that would be with Supergirl. So the list started to fly around. On Naruto and Supergirl's date, Naruto spoke to her about this. Her eyes had widened in shock, she never knew. As she apologized, she never knew. She didn't want to put him in jeopardy and now, with her careless action, she had gone and do. The same thing that she didn't want to do. And now he was in danger. And she was very sorry for that. But Naruto told her that it was nothing to worry about. The next time she should just be a bit more careful. However, while that was going on, Waller and her people were discussing Naruto. Being someone that they could not control Waller and her forces did not like that. That is why they were going to make a move. Yes, they were going to make a move to go after Naruto. As Waller spoke to all of them. The director of the DDG did not want Supergirl involved in any of this, as he had come to see her as an ally. However, Waller did not care about the aliens in the slightest. All she wanted was to make sure that she and her people were in control, well she especially. So with that, she made a rather bold move. A few days later, as Naruto was in a meeting with his shareholders, he was alerted by Hack that someone was currently in his office. No, that was surprising. The person had used instantaneous teleportation just like instant to get in his office as Naruto was rather surprised by who would be so bold to do that. Two hours later, Naruto came to his office without a worry in the world. As he met face to face with Waller as they started to talk, she started to make her demands known as Naruto pulled out a photo. It was a photo of her husband and her child as well. She pulled out her gun on him. However, Naruto showed her that she was out of her league by beating the living crap out of her before he brought her to the edge of the balcony and released her. However, she was saved by entrenches. The woman was able to heal Waller immediately as Waller told Naruto that he was screwed now. As Naruto turned his attention towards entrenches, she was a very powerful being. However, she was under Waller control. But something happened. As Waller noticed a change in Entrenches as well, that is when Instant and Painkiller arrived as they had Entrenches heart. They were able to give it back to her, Waller had it on their lock and key and could cause the girl pain and even kill her if she destroyed the heart but now Entrenches was free. As Naruto wanted Waller alive so that she could send a message to her people or whoever else 
decide that they would be bold enough to come after him. And Tran just turned towards her, as she was beyond grateful for Naruto for saving her, calling him a rescuer. As she turned her sights upon Waller, the woman could only cry in pain and agony as she dropped towards ground as Entrancha starts to affect her mind. As Naruto looked around, as he wondered what people would think of them if they saw the scene and hear the sounds that were happening up here right now. So yeah guys, the basic let's be left off, you guys can switch across the place, check it for yourself, and don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what-ifs over the other channels. Yes, I need a four of them guys, which I post what-if on, every single day for you guys enjoy so go ahead smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family and thank you for all of your help and support so without further ado what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys we begin this episode at a undisclosed location gentlemen we have a terrible situation on our hands amanda waller has not only failed to recruit naruto uzumaki but she has lost control of both Entrenches and her own mind. What made matter worse is, we have no idea of how exactly these events transpired. Rick Flagg and Waller were the only survivors of the whole ordeal. Rick had his memories wiped clean of the events and Waller is now certifiably insane, so she won't be of much help. General Lane explained to his compatriots, well, I suppose the first question to ask is there any hope of Waller regaining her sanity? Colonel Steve Trevor asks with concern. If it was any other person, no. But this is Amanda Waller. That woman is a devil in human form. She will be back to normal in a month tops. The problem is we will be blind to Naruto Uzumaki and Entrenches planned for an entire month. That is not a good thing for us. Especially that Entrenches has fiddled with Waller's mind. We have to assume that she and Naruto, if they are indeed working together, know everything that Waller knew, including everything about us. General Ling said in a grave tone, So you're basically saying that planetary security is compromised. We have to reboot everything and everyone and start from scratch. That could take forever, General Wade Eiling explained. It doesn't seem like we have a choice, General Swanwick said. Perhaps, however, I believe that you have an important role to play here, General Swanwick. You must tell Supergirl what happened to Waller. If Uzumaki and Entrenches are indeed in league with one another, then we can't afford for Supergirl to be in league with them. The three of them will be too powerful, Percy, Odell said. What exactly are you asking of, General Swanwick, Agent Odell? General Lane asks curiously. Nothing much, only that he be honest with Supergirl. That's all, Odell said in a cryptic tone. Everyone looked at him like he had grown a second head on his shoulder. Gentlemen, we need to confirm if Supergirl is in league with Naruto Uzumaki and or in trenches. If she's not, then we need to use her as a spy to gain information on Naruto and in trenches. Odell elaborated i see that is indeed a most excellent idea general odell general swanwick you will tell supergirl everything that you know about naruto Ozumaki and what happened here today and by doing so you must see from her reaction whether she's in league with him or not supergirl has only been dating him for the past two months as far as we are aware that is not long enough for us not to turn her against him general lane said I am not sure that I am comfortable with that general. Supergirl is a genuine good person with Earth and the people interested at heart. To use her like this, General Swanwick said, Will you grow a set of balls already Swanwick? Island spat with disgust. She's an alien, a very dangerous one. We only allow her to live because she has the potential to be useful to us. If you fail to use her then, she's to be terminated. Do you understand that, General Swanwick? General Island said in a grave tone. Swanwick did not respond. What General Island is trying to say, General Swanwick, is that if you care about Supergirl as much as you claim, then you will do this. Think of it as saving her life. General Lane said a bit more diplomatic than forcing the man to do something. 
And tell me, what if she is in league with Naruto? And or Enchantress? What then? Swanwick acts. Then you dispose of her. The DEO has more than enough supply of Kryptonite to take her down. Not to mention the Red Sun UV Ray weapons that was supplied by Lex Luthor for the division. General Lane said in a tone that made it clear to General Swanwick that he had no choice in this. I do not think you comprehend what you're asking of me. If Supergirl mysteriously disappear, then Superman will get involved. And if Superman get involved, then the Justice League will eventually get involved as well. Essentially, you're asking the DEO to go up against Earth's mightiest heroes. Swanwick said, trying to be the voice of reason. To why someone so lacking in imagination and creativity is in charge of the DEO is beyond my comprehension. General Swanwick used Amanda Waller resources. And before you ask, yes, I mean the Suicide Squad. Arm them with kryptonite weapons and UV sunray weapons and point them at Supergirl. If they get captured by the Justice League or Superman, simply blow them up. Odell said, like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Very well. It appears I have no choice in the matter. I just hope this doesn't blow up in our faces like the last time we went after Naruto Uzumaki. General Swanwick said, as he was not pleased at all by Agent Odell plan. But nevertheless, he accepted to try and make sure no unnecessary bloodshed came from this. Time skip. Kara, I am not sure that I want to hear it. I mean, you're still supposed to be in your honeymoon phase. Why do I sense a but in your description? Everything is supposed to be all rose petals and flowers. Alex Denver said to Kara Zorel, who was her adoptive sister. We are. We're definitely in the honeymoon phase. And the sex has been absolutely amazing. And I mean amazing, she said. But no, I will not accept it, said Alex as she placed her hand over her ears like she was a child. I will not let you taint the perfect image I have of Naruto Uzumaki. It's Uzumaki Naruto. That is how the Japanese says it. That is how he says it as well. But anyway, that's not the point. I need you to listen to me right now. You're the only one I can talk about this. Alex sighed as she removed her hand from her ears. Did he do something weird in bed? Alex asked, in a tender tone. No, well, sort of, just listen. Just listen to the whole story and then, you can tell me if I'm crazy or not. Okay, I'm listening, Alex said. Okay, well, you know that I've dated two guys before Nurutakan, right? And you know I never had an orgasm before, right? He's the only one that has made me experience that feeling before. What you don't know is, before Nurutukan and I, wait, do you have to keep on saying Kun all the time? Why do you keep on doing that? It's weird, Alex said. Well, initially, it was a way for me to tease and try to irritate him, but I end up liking it, and he also like it, especially when I, okay, okay, you don't need to finish that sentence. I get it, Alex said. Okay, good, now listen. What I never told you before is none of those guys, actually, were able to break my hymen. So, it's not only did I not have an orgasm, but my hymen remained intact. I had given up on actually having a, I don't know how to say it, a fulfilling, but yet complete. And like a normal relationship with a human, until now. But, Kara, why have you never told me about this? Alex asked, as she didn't know her sister was carrying such a burden. Because it just reminded me of how not normal I am, how alien I am, and how different I was from you. And I just didn't want to feel, y you know, she said. There was pain and sadness in her tone. I don't think I can ever fully understand, but I think I do, Alex said. But what changed? How was Naruto able to break it when others weren't able to? Alex asks, as she now was understanding what her sister was trying to say, a human perhaps did not have enough force to do something like that because she was a Kryptonian. So how was Naruto able to do that? What made him so special? I honestly don't know. And honestly, I didn't care. I didn't care that you wouldn't allow me to have any dominant position or have any position of control. 
because it was so good, you know. I thought it didn't matter because it was so good. And I was with him. And everything was just so amazing. But, wait, 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 stop right there. He wouldn't what? I mean, where does he think he is? Feudal era Japan? A woman can have a dominant position if she wants. There is nothing wrong with that, in fact. Most men enjoy that. Alex argue. I don't think it has anything to do with sexism, or gender bias, or whatever. I think he is afraid of me, or my powers, I believe. If I was to take the dominant role, or be on top, that I would actually squash him. He just want me to lay there and kneel there, while he do all the work. Just to be safe, I think. Kara explained as she grabbed her cup of coffee. Alex had just made a cup for the both of them, as she grabbed her own as they sat down in the couch. You know, the thought never crossed my mind. I mean, you're literally harder than steel. And you're the second strongest being on this planet. You could literally turn him into mince meat if you thrust back your hip too hard. I know that you wouldn't do it under normal circumstances, but you said that Nurta can get you there. Once you reach at high, can you control your powers? Or when you're just approaching a feeling, can you control yourself in that state? Alex asks with concern. I don't know. Like I said, Nurtakan has exerted full control and domination in every single one of her sexual exploits. So far all I've been doing is just lying down or kneeling down and just taking it. But giving it can be just as good as taking it. Does my power mean I could never give it? Will I always have to just lay there and take it? Carr said with despair in her tone. Well, not necessary. If the love that you share with each other is true, I'm sure that you can tell him the whole truth one day. I'm sure the greatest tech expert in the world can fashion a red sun UV ray system for the bedroom. Alex suggested, giving Kara ideas. However, those come with different problems. If only that was possible. I just received some, I don't know how to describe this news. But General Swanwick called me in this morning. And according to him, Naruto is a super villain. Who is in league with, get this, a metahuman sorcerer, demonic hybrid. Yes, you heard me. A metahuman sorcerer, demonic hybrid. And get this, they beat up and brain rape a high level government agent and stole all the secret intel that she had, driving her mad. This, allegedly, is a person I'm supposed to reveal my secrets to. Oh, and did I mention that this government agent knew my secret identity? So, Naruto knows that you're Kara Danvers? Alex said in surprise. If he really did steal all the information she had in her mind, then yes. He knows that Supergirl and Kara Danvers are one in the same. Kara says she tried to shake the frustration out of her system. What are you gonna do? Do you believe the story that General Swanwick told you? I mean, I trust the General wholeheartedly. He has been like a second father to us. I mean to me. And like a third to you. He's a good man. But that doesn't mean his intel could be correct. Someone could be lying to him. I know, Alex, I know. I guess I'll just have to ask Naruto if I ever develop the courage to visit him again. Kara said with a sad pout. Wait, is that the reason why you're here with me right now and not with him? Yes, but that is not the only reason why I will seek your company or anything. It's just... I just don't know how to confront him about this, Kara said. Has he called to check up on you? What will you do when he does? Oh yeah, Alex said when Supergirl gave her a look. Supergirl doesn't have a phone number so he can't call you. Nor can you call him, Alex said. As Kara brought her hands together. General Swanwick want me to spy on Rutakan for the government. He said that the government had plans to send a metahuman hit squad to kill him. If I do not comply, I don't want to be anyone's spy. Much less a spy on Naruto can fall people, but I don't want him killed. Alex, what do I do? I don't want to lose him, and I don't want to believe that he's capable of all those bad things. From where I'm sitting, I can only see two choices. You either tell him the truth and ask him what is going on, or you spy on him. I know it won't be easy, but those are the choices. But you have to make a choice and deal with the consequences. You're right, of course you're right, but can't I do that tomorrow, or like next week or something, Kara said. 
Definitely not next week. That's just way too much procrastination. Let's make it tomorrow, Alex said. Alright, alright, I get it. Procrastination will only make things worse. As she released a heavy sigh, she kind of wished that she was not Supergirl right now, so she can have a normal relationship with the boy that she liked. Meanwhile, at an undisclosed location, what in God's name? General Eiling, what are you doing? What has gotten into you and everyone else around here? Juice acts as the entire Cadmus base had gone nuts. There was loud hip-hop music that was playing on the speakers. While everyone was dancing and twerking like they were in some kind of secret sex club instead of a secret military facility base, Juice is a tall, athletic, 18-year-old of African descent. Short black hair and black eyes, he's wearing a full black and blue combat bodysuit with yellow lightning streaking in it. Ah, if it isn't Juice, arguably the most talented electromagnetic human on the earth. Let us test your metal, shall we? Tell me, Juice, what exactly do you think is going on around here? Eiling asks in amusement. What happened is everyone turned into happy go lucky, nut jobs. That is what is going on, Juice said. So you mean to tell me that you believe that everyone turned into nut jobs and sexual deviants without any cause whatsoever? You don't even find it suspicious that none of your friends and comrades from the Ultimate have come in today. As I recall, they have never missed or been late for a meeting, have they? General Eiling said. Is this some kind of test? Juice asked, looking around, confused as he looked towards a break dancing and twerking employees all around the facility. Why is everyone dancing and what the hell is that loud music? Seriously, loud hip hop? Stereotyping much? Juice asks. Perhaps it is a stereotype, but nevertheless, you have failed the tests of your instincts and your deductive analysis skills. You failed to sense that something was seriously wrong here and you could not even deduce that the only way everyone here will be acting as crazy as they are. At the same time your team failed to show up for the scheduled meeting is because something seriously wrong happened or is busy happening. Eileen said, now we will test your combat ability. Poof. Eileen went up in smoke to reveal a man standing there. However, his face was covered by a fox mask. There was two blades strapped to his back, two guns on his side. What the hell? Who are you? said Juice in shock. As he jumped a few meters away in shock in order to get away from this demonic creature as soon as possible. So your first instinct was to establish distance between yourself and the enemy and take on a fighting stance. Good. There might be hope for you yet. The figure said in a dark, deep tone. Juice watches everyone else poofed away. If you must know those people were never real. They were my shadow clones. Transform into the employees to look like them. The actual employees are sleeping peacefully in their homes. Unaware that imposters are running around. Pretend to be them. Man, just who the hell are you? What the hell do you want from me, Juice asks. You can call me Kitsune. But that is only my alias. If you want me to tell you the rest, then prove yourself worthy of that. Fight me and defeat me, said Kitsune. His entire body became illuminated by a strong energy current, so much so that it looked real. Like it was solid. Lightning release. Lightning armor, Kitsune said. Oh man, you think you can use electricity to defeat me? Me? Man, you're a fool, said Juice. As he too became enveloped by lightning as he moved, at an immense speed as he launched, 20 different attack in a split second, punch kick sweeps everything, however, to his shock all of them were dodged or evaded. Not bad, not bad at all, but is that all that you got? Is that really all you can do? Kitsune asks. What have you done to my friends? What the hell is going on? said Juice, as he was getting frustrated. As he had backed away once again to assess the situation, the more relative question, Juice froze in shock as he heard the voice behind him. Kitsune swat him with his hand as Juice was sent sailing as he smashed into the side of the wall. Is why you're not using your full power from the get-go. Sure, it is not wise for you to reveal all of your power in the beginning but that depends on the level of your opponent. Take now for instance I could have easily killed you a moment ago. And you would have died without revealing your chump card.
Kitsune said, Man, forget you. Is this supposed to be a fight or a school lecture? Do said frustratedly as he picked up himself. As he tried to buy some time to rein in the dizziness that he was feeling from being whack in the back of the head like that. As he wondered if his opponent's hands were made of steel or something. Why can't it be both a fight and a lecture, said Kitsun. Okay, smart guy. You're gonna get it now, said Juice. He was now angry. His entire body became electricity as he started zip, zap all around the room. A feat that would have had many people unable to keep up with him. Not with their eyes, not with their minds, and certainly not with their bodies. However, Juice realized something terrifying. This person was actually keeping up with him in this form, blocking off every path that he tried to appear. As he realized he might be fighting some kind of god or something. However, he decided to try something as he ran right into the interloper and merged with the lightning that was cackling off of him as he tried to take control of it, therefore trying to take control of the guy's body. Now I kill you with your own body, Juice said, as he forced the man to strangle himself with his own right arm. Ha! What now? Where's all that big talk you had earlier, huh? What are you gonna- Juice trailed off. As Kit soon took control of his body and removed his arm away from his throat with ease. That was impressive. Not only in terms of your abilities, but you were able to come up with that on the fly. It would have worked against probably anyone else in the world, probably. As he turned Juice into a large ball of lightning that was floating above his right hand. What are you doing to me? Why can't I change back? Why can't I control my form? Juice said. He was getting frantic. Ninja rule number 21. Be careful how you use our techniques. Otherwise, they might be used back against you. Kitsune said. Okay, okay man, you win. What the hell do you want from me? Said Juice. His tone was fearful. You have passed my tests, and therefore you are worthy of becoming my protege. I now dub you my apprentice. From here on out you are officially a member of Team Ultiman of Hive. As he released his hold over him, allowing Juice to return back to his human form. Hive? I don't understand. I thought I worked for Cadmus and the government. Is this a promotion or something? Juice asked, confused. For that question, I think you'll be best if your sibling apprentices. Answer for you. And just as he finished saying that, the remaining members of the group walked in. Winged Dragon. Long Shadow. Downpour. Shifter. What's going on here? Did you guys betray the government? Did you guys betray Cadmus? Juice asks. No, Juice. Cadmus and the government betrayed us. Winged Dragon said angrily. Winged Dragon was the designated leader of the Ultimate. His power was the generation and control over wind currents. He's an Asian American teen with short black hair, brown eyes as well, and he's wearing a red and white full body suit. But I don't understand. Maxwell Lord and Dr. Emil Hammered. They lied to us, Wind Dragon said, cutting juice off. They lied to us, man. We are genetically engineer clones. We are not even the first batch. We're the 18. The others were failures. So are we actually. Our bodies would expire in a few months. Or at least it would have. Kitsune said that he can cure us. He could make us whole. Wind Dragon explained. That's, that's nonsense. I'm not a clone. I have my entire life memories. Juice said angrily. Those are false. Implanted memories. We've only been alive for three months. Kitsune showed us proof. In fact, they were already preparing the next batch of clones. To replace us. They are on a secret level. On the floor below this base. They look exactly like us Juice. The only thing is they are empty vessels. Because they haven't been implanted with. False memories yet. Wind Dragon said calmly even though there was an edge to his tone. His fist was clenched tightly as well. He's telling the truth Juice. This is not a trick or a game. It's not a dream either. Long Shadow said. He was a very tall muscular teen of native American descent wearing a black pants, a brown sleeveless top with a navy American design. He has long black hair and black eyes and despite his intimidated physique, he is a very kind and gentle soul assuming that he even have a soul given the fact that he's a clone. Damn, I can't believe this shit man, I'm a clone. Crazy, you said in this me. Yeah, totally. Wind Dragon muttered. Anyway, 
Tell me I'm not the only one that got my ass whooped by Kitsune today. You guys got your butt whooped as well, Juice asks, with a much lighter tone, as he seemed to be over the fact that he was a genetic engineer person already. We all got our butts whooped. I turned into a dragon butt. He summoned a gigantic toad on top of me. I got crushed in one move. It was so embarrassing, Shifter said. She's a very beautiful white skinned girl. Not white as in Caucasian even though she was actually Caucasian. But her skin was white, like literally white. She had white hair as well, pink eyes, and a slim figure. As her hair was tied up in a ponytail, she was wearing a purple suit. Well, that's embarrassing. And giant toad? Where the hell did you even get a giant toad? Joe said. I made them through. A complicated process that require engineering and a use of my powers. I have a whole clan of them, Kitsune said. Like he was merely talking about the weather. Did he tell you that the clones talk as well? Downpour. The twin brother of Shifter said. Downpour is basically the male version of his sister. As they were identical. He looked almost exactly like her except no lipstick and he had the more masculine features. And his suit was similar to hers as well. Giant talking toad. Well what about that? Honestly, I'm not that even surprised anymore. At this point I expect flying pigs and toad fairies to come out of this guy ass. Juicer said, causing everyone to laugh at Kitsune's expense. Even Kitsune smiled under his mask, but he could not be seen. Anyway, what about you? How did he beat you? Juice said as he turned his question towards downpour. I turned myself into a tidal wave, but the toad that squashed my sister swallowed me and spat me out in a jet stream. I lost consciousness afterwards, downpour said. Wow, I can't tell which one is worse, getting crushed by a giant toad or getting introduced to the toad intestines. Anyway, Kitsune believed that I have the ability to transmute the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms in the atmosphere into water. He doesn't believe I need to change myself into water because according to him, the six liters or so inside of a human body cannot turn into a tidal wave unless I was creating additional water to add to myself. Don't poor said proudly. Transmute hydrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere into water? Is that even possible? Ju said. Well, Kitsune already demonstrated for my brother. It's definitely possible. Shifter said. So you have hydrokinesis too? Damn. Just how many powers do you have, said Juice, looking towards Kitsune. The nature of my power is only limited by my imagination. Hard work, intelligence, study, practice, research, training are also a requirement as well, said Naruto under his mask. Oh, okay. So what about you, Long Shadow? Did you actually win? Asked Juice looking towards him. I fought a toad and lost. It had crazy. Martial arts as well. Intense reaction speed and agility. I stood no chance. But I also learned that the size of my form is not a limitation to what I can do. Kitsune promised to teach me how to conquer and overcome the so-called limitation of my size. He's also going to teach me martial arts. Long Shadow said. So your giant astral form got marked as well. Damn, Wind Dragon, you lost too, said Juice, looking towards his leader. Wind style, Rusting Shuriken. That's a technique that Kitsune used to defeat me. The technique either sucked up or diffused all of my win. If he had thrown it at me, I would have certainly died. I've never felt so much power in my entire life. Wind Dragon said as he shuddered at the memory of going up against such a fearsome technique. Okay. I don't want to hear any more of this now. Just show me the proof of us being clones and let's get the hell out of here. Of course and naturally, we will destroy the clones and every piece of evidence that this place has ever existed, Kitsune said. The following day, 9am. My god, what happened here, Supergirl said. As she looked in awe and concern. I was hoping that you could tell me, General Swanwick said, curiously. Me? Supergirl asked in surprise. Well, you deal with superpower beings all the time, so I thought you might have an idea on what was able to do this. General Swanwick elaborated. Do I know anyone that has the power to turn a former military base into a gigantic canyon and leave behind no trace of radiation or residue? No, I have no idea who could have done this. What about that demonic metahuman 
sorcerer person, Supergirl acts. Even though she really didn't want to know the answer because of all the implications it might have on her lover. Well, it does look like the entire base and the foundation and the underground levels of the base was moved out of here. That could be done by teleportation, which is one of Entrancher's abilities. But there's no record of her doing something on this large scale. However, we do not have a full extent on her abilities. The general said, So she's one of your suspects, Kara asks. She's the main suspect, which mean, so is Naruto Uzumaki. It can't be coincidence that this happened right after Amanda Waller, mine was ransacked by the entrenches. General Swanwick said, A look of concern came on his face as he saw. The look of distress on Supergirl's face. I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it looked like your love interest is not what he appeared to be. General Swanwick said in a blunt tone, but he was also sympathetic about it. Supergirl did not reply for a moment until she finally spoke up. What was in this base? What exactly did they steal from you? And be honest with me because you can't lie to me about this. Not when it's so important to me, she said. As Kara used her x-ray so that she could study the general vitals to make sure that he wasn't lying to her. Something that she hasn't done since the first month of him working with her. This was a research facility. We experimented with genetic engineering and DNA experimentation. The effort was in the interest of creating superpower or enhanced human soldiers in order to protect us from extra terrestrial threats and even to use against the Justice League if they ever turn against the world. General Swanwick said, Genetic experimentation? I am not in support of such practices. Krypton had such projects as well. They were stopped for a reason, said Supergirl, in a disapproval tone. Unfortunately, neither you or I have a say in the matter. The general told her, You still have not answered my question. What was taken? Or rather, who? Five meta-human teams, all with different kind of meta-powers. One is a shapeshifter her twin has, Hydrotenesis. Another has the ability to create a gigantic energy construct around himself. And the other two has aerokinesis and electrokinesis. Swanwick explained in detail. So, he took your research and the fruit of that research, Kara said. Yes, and the knowledge itself. The doctor who has worked here for years, his mind has been wiped of all information, all the years of knowledge, all the work that he's put into this program. The program Ultraman. As a result, we won't even be able to rebuild. General Swanwick said with concern, as Supergirl glanced towards him, then at least, something good came of this. She then shot off into the sky, not giving him a time to say anything back. As Swanwick stood there silently, well, that doesn't look like a happy talk. General Lane said as he approached, she has some issues to resolve. This is close to home for her. She was really into Naruto Uzumaki. I think she actually loves him. At least she loved who she thought he was. Swanwick replied. For God's sake, Swanwick. She's a bloody alien. What does she know about the affairs of a human heart? General Lane replied with disgust as Swanwick turned and looked towards him. As he was unable to believe the ignorance that was coming out of the mouth of his colleague. How is Eileen doing? Swanwick said, changing the topic. As well as you can expect, he's devastated. An entire day of his life was taken away from him. And this entire base. None of the employees, no one remember anything on what they were doing and how they end up where they were. They only know that they came too. This morning. And all of us was powerless to do anything about it. Eileen said clenching his fists. As it was infuriated to know how powerless they were in front of supernatural freaks. And they couldn't do anything about it. National security is becoming a joke. It seems like we're always 10 steps behind. And the more we take a step forward, they move 10 steps forward once again. First we lost the Royal Flush Unit and now the Ultimate. It seems like we've been preparing for an invasion but we have already been invaded and colonized. But we just did not know what was going on. Swanwick said, then the first step is to find out who has colonized us. And we need to find out who else Naruto Uzumaki is working with, apart from Entrantress. 
or perhaps who he's working for. General Lane said. Time skip. 10 minutes later. What the hell are you doing? Why are you just standing there like an idiot? Take me to Naruto. Now. Poise Aiga said. Unable to believe the naivete and the stupidity that was in front of her right now. And what exactly are you going to do? Look, you're very powerful, okay? But Lobo is on another league entirely. You cannot beat him. Not without a brilliant plan and the right setup. And the boss told us not to interfere. Instant retorted. Causing Pamela to pull on her red hair in frustration. And what was the source of her frustration? Well, it was simple. A very powerful intergalactic mercenary had broke in. Bypassing all of this security, eyes glowing menacing red and kidnap their boss and place him on his motorcycle and just ride away. Okay, maybe I can't beat him, but you have instant teleportation. You can teleport in the route and touch him and then teleport out of there with him. Pamela argued as instant release a sigh. Look, trust me, the boss will be fine. He can take care of himself, more than any of us actually. I don't expect you to understand but the reality here is that we're not normal bodyguards. Our job is not to protect the boss from harm. Our job is to protect his assets from harm. The boss is more than capable of protecting himself. After all, with the exception of you, he personally trained us all how to fight. Pamela was confused. I don't understand. You're telling me that Looker Brainwave, our man and painkiller was trained by Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, the nerdy genius who is your boss, can fight on the level of a metahuman. Wait, is he a metahuman as well? A metahuman? Instant start to laugh. The boss is so much more than a mere metahuman. You really underestimate him too much. Anyway, I've said too much already. I'm sure the boss will reveal everything to you in due time. Trust is earned, I can tell that you genuinely care for him, but it's not my place to tell you the boss secrets. He'll let you in when time is right, but for now, just trust me, the boss will be fine, Instant said. Either you're a total idiot, or you're the most stupid person on planet Earth. Are you aware who was it that took our boss? That's Lobo, freaking Lobo, a space mercenary, the guy who once defeated and kidnapped Superman, Superman. The strongest person on this planet. You know that, right? If you don't trust me, that is fine. But you have to trust the boss. And he told you to stand down. If you don't trust him, it doesn't matter because he paid you to obey his orders. So, again, stand down, Instant said. As there was a notable edge to his voice. Okay, okay, fine, said Pamela. As she didn't know exactly when she started to care so much about her geeky boss. And a part of her hated for caring about a mere human. After all, all that should matter to her was nature itself. But between her friendship with Harley Quinn, her love affair with Kite Man, and whatever her relationship was with her boss, the lines were getting a bit blurry. Just what is Naruto Uzumaki? I've been here for a couple of months now, and I still don't know nothing about him. All I have is more questions and yet no answers at all. Alright, good instant said. Now let's see what the repairs are for the damage that guy caused. And let's shit instant trail off. As Supergirl came rushing in, her eyes glowing red. What's going on here? And you better not lie to me instant she said. I don't know about you but I don't think it would end well. If we were to lie to her right now, I've never seen her like this before. I get it Pamela, I'm not blind. And my instincts were perfectly fine, thank you. Intergalactic space mercenary Lobo happened. He kidnapped the boss and he only works on a reward based system. Assuming the boss has never left planet Earth, then it's someone on this planet that has hired Lobo. But who would have the kind of juice to get Lobo to run an errand for them? The US government, perhaps. They did just attack us recently, after all. Who was that kind of reach in Metropolis? The DoD. Lex Luthor. Intergang, Cadmus, and a number of super villains. I could think of a few other. All right, all right, I get it. It could be anyone. Just shut up for a moment and let me concentrate. Supergirl said, her anger a thing of the past as she searched for her beloved. I, I think I found something. She blasted off with a sonic boom. 
Seems like the situation is about to resolve itself. I mean Superman was later able to defeat Lobo after that many times. Maybe Supergirl can do it, Pamela said. Happy that her boss was going to be okay but she was displeased that it was Supergirl that was going to save him and not her. Meanwhile, in an undisclosed desert location. Ouch, Naruto cry. However, it was rather unconvincing as he crash landed in the sand dune. After all, he was perfectly fine. His kidnapper was angry, that was pretty much obvious. But Naruto did not know what made him so mad, as he's been a good captive, because he just won't get this whole thing over with. Frag, can you believe the nerve? Calling the main man from the other side of the universe to hunt down, a little, weak, base stick like you. You didn't even resist the main man, your bodyguard just stood and watched. Where is the fun in that, Lobo asks throwing his hands up in the air, in exasperation. Perhaps whoever hired you was playing a prank on you, or they thought the bounty hunter was just in it for the money, so as long as you get paid, you will do as they say, said Naruto, as he got to his feet and dusted his suit off. I'm no normal bounty hunter, I'm the main man. I only get called to hunt the biggest, baddest, hardest, and most dangerous prey in the universe. Not some punk ass businessman, from a backwater planet like Earth. Lobo complained. I see. So it's not only about the money, but the thrill of the hunt for you. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You will have to have that kind of mindset to be the fourth best bounty hunter in the universe, said Naruto. Lobo eyes widening in shock, unable to believe the information that he just heard. What the frack did you just say to me, he asks. As he pulled out the gigantic plasma incinerator on his back and pointed towards his target. I'm pretty sure whoever hired you want me alive. Perhaps this is why. You're the fourth best bounty hunter in the universe, said Naruto. There you go again yapping your mouth about the main man being the fourth best. I am the main man and the main man is best. It is known by every person in the universe. Really? Because I heard and I know differently. What? Who the hell is better than the main man? Name one person, in fact, name the three people that are better than the main man. Tell me who hired you to kidnap me and I'll... Lobo interrupted. Big Barda and Mr. Miracle hire me. Now tell me who you heard is better than the main man. Alright then, Kitsune the Toad Sage, Deathstroke the Terminator and Bullfunga the Unrelenting. In that order, said Naruto. Wow. Those actually sound like cool names. I should get one of those. How about Lobo? The terrible terror. As he started to laugh, sound good, huh? Lobo the blue terror. Lobo the obliterator. Sounds a bit derivative to me. You just totally changed the terminator into obliterator, said Naruto. Are you calling the main man a thief? You know what? Neither Mr. Miracle or Big Barter. Said if they want you alive or not. They did not specify. They just said that the main man had to take you to them. So take you to them I will. In a body bag. As he fire the plasma beam towards Naruto. Only for it to be swatted away by a red. And blue streak. As it destroyed over to the far part of the desert. Just in the nick of time. Great save my love. Don't you my love me. You liar. I only saved you because it was the right thing to do. We are not on good terms, Supergirl said, cutting Naruto off. I cannot even fathom why we're not on good terms. But if it is a reason why you did not come to my apartment last night, like you usually did. I am eager to get this all over with, so we can sort things out and get back to normal, said Naruto. Normal? Tch. Yeah, as if, said Kara. What's that supposed to mean? But before she could answer, though, Lobo interrupted. That symbol. Ah, a cheesy. Feminists want to be Superman, I see. The main man kicked the fragging ass of Superman. And the main man ain't about to lose. To a cheesy feminine wannabe Superman, Lobo said. Wow, this guy is insufferable, Kara said. Adno, I find him to be quite amusing, said Naruto. Kara resists the urge to stare at Naruto. As she would not turn her back to this enemy, who had defeated her cousin. Fifteen minutes later, to say that Naruto was surprised was a massive understatement. It wasn't really that. 
his girlfriend Supergirl had lost a straight up battle with Lobo. But it was how one sided it was. His victory was not that hard. He at least thought that she would force him to burn some energy for his regeneration but she did not. Superman hold back a lot in his battles. That was clear to see. However, Kara was not like him. Sure she hold back a bit but not anywhere near what Superman actually did. But she did not hold back in this battle because she was pissed off and they were in an empty area not to mention Lobo was seemingly immortal as he's known on earth to be someone that can regenerate from even a drop of blood yet somehow Lobo made easy work of her. His girlfriend still had a long way to go in terms of the three categories skill, raw power and strength and experience. In case Supergirl did not come Naruto was going to use his Permitian suit the one that he used to hide his face when he had to throw Waller off the building however that suit suppresses his power tremendously. But right now Naruto could see that that suit will not work against Lobo so he would have to use his power. Naruto can run, save yourself, I'll hold him off for you. Kara said with both love and devotion willing to sacrifice herself for the sake of the man that she loved no matter if it turns out that he was a villain or not. No matter if she was angry at him or not as she stood between the bounty hunter and her boyfriend. Fear not my love, I will save us both by defeating this menace. After all, he is only the fourth best bounty hunter in the universe and I am number one. The kid soon told Sage, said Naruto, as Naruto summoned his business suit away and reverse summoned his suit on him as well. Well, 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 what do we have here? Crack me in the ass cheeks and bend me over like a cheesy femme whore. The main man did not expect this turn of events. Save me a lot of time because no longer does the main man need to waste time by hunting down this kitsune. Gotta say though I never expect your cheesy punk ass to be this so called toad sage. Anyway the main man just has to kill you to become number one right? Lobo said. Hmm I'm not sure it worked like that. Does killing me make you a better bounty hunter than the other two? Ah I see. So I gotta hunt down and kill all three of ya. Damn that's a lot of work. I don't even know where to start searching for them Lobo said. Or maybe you could just improve your bounty hunting skills and get a higher mission successful rate and become a better bounty hunter said Naruto. Nah, I think I'll just stick with plan A and kill the whole lot of you said Lobo. Naruto kun, how did you change into that so fast? What happened to your voice? Just who are you she said as she looked up towards him. To put it simply my love, I am Naruto Uzumaki to your car Danvers and the Nathan Wilson to your car Zorel and the Kitsune to your Supergirl. In the essence, so to say my story is not that much different from yours. As her eyes widened, are you saying that you're an alien that was adopted by a human family? So Uzumaki Naruto is your earth name, I guess it makes sense. That is why you have a Japanese name and you look so, you know, Caucasian. You're correct for the most part except I am not an alien. I am a new god of apocalypse. In other words, I am not even from this dimension. I am a fourth dimensional being. He might as well tell her seeing that she saw his true self. What's apocalypse? I know about dimensions. My cousin told me about his encounter with a fifth dimensional being with godlike powers. But I never heard of Kara trail off as she was now right beside Naruto. One moment she was over there and now she was right beside him. Without her even noticing what was going on, you really should not turn your back on the enemy, especially one that just took you down said Naruto as he pointed to show Lobo where Kara once was, as his sword was embedded in the ground. The main man has grown bored of the yapping and blabbering. The main man has a date with the Toad Sage and the Femme Kryptonian is not invited. This ain't no threesome party, the main man said as Supergirl looked towards Naruto. I teleport you by the marker I placed on you on the evening that we first met each other said Naruto. I knew that it would come in handy especially if you were to be in danger. She looked at him in shock. You violated my privacy and my trust she said. Yes and I will do it again said Naruto. I am a ninja after all it is what we do. Besides you have no right to say anything about lies and deception when 
You've been keeping secrets away from me from the start. What? That doesn't make look said Naruto cutting her off. We can have this conversation later tonight at my place. For now, just sit back and enjoy the show while I send this amateur back to where he came from. You can't expect me to just... Actually, I think I'll do just that, she said. As she flew backwards when she remembered that, her boyfriend was a god. Not just that, but a ninja god. Well, that's surprising. I never expect her to back off so easily, Naruto thought. But who am I to look at gift hearts in the mouth? Now, where were we, said Naruto as he start to walk towards Lobo. Lobo grinned as he start to move forward as well. But guys, it'll be in up so right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.